But you have to admit that you was very controlling. You really tried to control me, bro. Like, it's mad shit and it's mad examples where I couldn't do stuff. And it literally got to the point where my family was literally concerned. What's good, everybody? Welcome back to Told by T. Today, I am reacting to some Chanel Richie. This is Did I Cheat? A message to my ex. So I reacted to Chanel's first videos. I reacted to Oh My La. And now we about to get into this most recent video. I'm interested in hearing what she has to say, especially since, you know, Oh My La uploaded her video. So this is in response to that, I guess. Let's go ahead and get into it. But first, like, comment, subscribe, make sure y'all show the channel some love. All right, now we can get into it. When they love you more than they love themselves or more than anything in this world, it literally gets scary, bro. Like, nobody, nobody's gonna understand how I feel. Damn. They were in a codependent relationship and Oh My La did say Hey babies, what's good? It's your girl Chanel and I am back with another video. So first of all, before I get into this video, make sure you guys get this video a like. Make sure you subscribe, make sure you post notifications on all and follow me on my social networks right here. And I had to get up, I had to get up and make this video. Like, this shit is getting crazy because it's like, I don't know if y'all know what's going on. Um. I had a couple of Shannon with me and Omala, we was together. We broke up or whatever. I made two videos and um, one was recent and then she finally responded like four months later. So she said her side of the story and you already know, like first of all, people who support me, they're still supporting. There's always different sides of the story. It's your side, their side, and the truth. So, and I see you know, up. of course there's some people who switch your sides so or like, oh my God, you this, there shouldn't that, be no uh, sides. Okay, so. I just want to touch on because I did watch her video and I really didn't want to do this and I still don't want to do this and it's still some stuff that I'm trying my hardest not to say like I swear to God out of respect for her like because it's just things could get very messy very quickly right. and I did not want to go this route with these YouTube like, breakups I just yeah, didn't right want to go this route I just want to say that our relationship and she knows this our relationship has been going downhill for a long time so for her to get on this, this camera they and both said that but for how long like has it been years and y'all just stayed together to make videos like how long was it one year two years have it been three years and y'all was only good for like two of them what what was the situation say that oh when you got your surgery you really changed so i really do think surgery had to play a part like one thing i want y'all to know and i'm saying this in the most humblest way teeth done or body done or not I could have left the relationship at any time and still... Yeah, I said that. Prop. Chanel was bad before. She's bad now. Oh My La is also a beautiful woman. Like, they're both very attractive. Or still, like, relationships just don't work out sometimes. It doesn't always have to be, oh, one person cheated or this person got their body done and they think they all like... Or like, people outgrow each other. Like, I met her when I was but 22 years cheat? old. I'm 27. Like, I, I, I want two different things now. We literally Facts. outgrew each other, Facts. and I outgrew her. At the age I am now, I do not think the same way that I did when I was 18. I do not think the same way that I did when I was 21, 23, not even 25. Like, I don't think, this, I don't think the same way. I just don't. I'm not going to let things. nobody make me feel bad about that. Like, literally, if you think back to all the YouTube couples that started out, De'Aaron, Ken, um, mad, mad couples that y'all saw was forever. What happened? Like, people literally outgrow each other. And that's something that I'm really going to need y'all to understand. And I'm not going to get bashed. But a lot of couples have fallen down here. Like, Tia and Elon. Y'all remember Tia and Elon? I used to really like them. Or belittled. Or have anybody make me feel bad about outgrowing somebody because it happens and i'm not i never discredited her and said that she didn't help me during my surgery i'm saying you guys like to say oh she got her body done and she left you um like i said i was getting surgery regardless and our relationship was going downhill because she know that me and her hadn't even really fucked in like a year or years like, i didn't even want to have sex like we didn't have sex together we did it's a lot of stuff that happened that she knows like our relationship was going downhill way before that's crazy because the whole reason why they got popular was because they used it was sex like they used to post those little choking photos on instagram and that's really how they got viral and then they started youtube 
the, the picture. She knew I felt depressed. She knew I didn't feel like myself. She knew I felt tied down. She knew that I felt like I was in a possessive relationship where I couldn't grow. And she knows that she didn't give me room to feel like I could grow and venture out and be around friends and have a social life outside of her. She always made me feel guilty. Yeah, and I feel like I said that. I mentioned that in a video where I reacted to Oh My Lie. Even though you don't say to somebody, oh, you can't have friends. Oh, you can't do this. You can't do that. Your actions towards them can still make somebody feel that way. And they were very codependent on each other. So I'm sure Oh My Lie, it was also like, all right, well, if you don't have friends, then maybe I'll cut all my friends off. Because Oh My Lie said that she didn't have friends during this time in their relationship. So, yeah. They okay. only had and each she other. Knows that for That's a not fact. healthy. She knows that shit for a fact. Because that was a big problem in our relationship. Because I enjoy freedom, individuality. And now she's talking about that or that she's big on that. But you wasn't big on that in our relationship. And you know that. Like, I could admit to things that I was wrong or certain traits about my personality. I'm not that affectionate. Things like that. And all of that. But you have to admit that you was very controlling. You really tried to control me, bro. Like, it's mad shit and it's mad examples where I couldn't do stuff. And it literally got to the point where my family was literally concerned. And, and let's talk about it. Like, let's Damn. even talk about it. When I say, like, you're possessive, you were possessive, and you were controlling, like, it was a time where my best so friend, she was my talking directly friend, to her. she had came um, to Georgia mm -hmm. to visit, and I tried to go see her. Like, when I tell you, oh, my lot had, like, a fucking, like, she went crazy. Like, and that was my first time ever trying to hang out with anybody outside of her, and, bro, I've never seen that side of her. It was scary. Like, it literally, she was standing at the door telling me that I couldn't go. She told me that I was fucking my best friend, bro. My best friend, I hang out with my best friend to this day, Misha. Like, I couldn't hang out with her. I literally was crying. I had someone threaten my life and say that, like, they will hurt their self. And she knows that this is true. She knows that this is true. She knows she did that shit. And that just set a tone that literally just Yeah, once me. you do some shit like that, I can't stay. Like, if you, if every time I do something that you don't like, you threaten to hurt yourself, I'm gone. Because you're being manipulative. You're being, you're being manipulative and you're being, like, narcissist. That's a narcissistic tendency that's spiteful. Like, you can't do shit like that. And I don't know if it correlates, because all my life did say that she was, you know, in the car that day, breaking down to call a hotline. So, did she genuinely feel those feelings or was she using it as a tactic to control Chanel? I don't know, but... Either way, I hope that she got help. I can't even she have did. a life outside of you. Like, this shit is scary. Like, and let's really talk about it. Like, and I did not want to go this deep, but I'm like, you know how you made me feel. You know that I felt so controlled. Like, you know, you know exactly what you did to me. Like, you literally, I could not be a person outside of you without feeling bad. Like, I would literally, I remember that day like it was yesterday. I was so fucking scared. Like, I literally, it was my first day ever trying to hang out outside of you, bro. You put on a big ass scene. You stood at the door. Like, I literally felt like a fucking kid. Like, I, that shit was so scary. Because I had never tried to hang out with anybody but you. And this was the reaction. And I was like, bro, this reality is crazy. Like... So, you know, we and with situations like that, like she's saying, that's the first time that she saw that side of her. That could have been a year in, that could have been three years in, that could have been, you know, at the end of their relationship, whatever the case may be. But you just never know what side of somebody you're going to get until you in that relationship with them and that situation comes up. So when people show you who they are, dip. I don't care if it's three years, four years, five years, ten years. When people show you who they are, dip. Because that's who they are. You just didn't see it till then. They didn't allow it to be seen until then. But once they show you, get out of it because it's not gonna change. I can pass that shit, but it was so scary and it never left my mind. Then most on. recently, when you was here, just controlling behaviors that I had to deal with. Um, one night, my sister, it was her best friend birthday party, and I wanted to go. I ended up telling Amala I was going. Uh, uh, yo, she's. Stood by the door. She wanted to fight with me. Like, I couldn't do anything. And when I, I just stormed out the house. And when I got to the party, I was just looking at everybody and all the women. I was like, I know everybody here is not single. And I just want to know when it was time for them to head out, like, where they stopped at the door, where they questioned, and, like, no, where was it, like, weird. gotta be like, a fight or argument. Like, every time I tried to do anything outside of her, bro, it was, like, a fight or argument. Like, and after a while, she tried to fix it. 
because she know how bad it was. But it's like you already set the tone to the point where I even feel guilty yeah. about. Yep, that's the problem right there. Because now you don't even want to do it because you know it's gonna create tension. It's gonna create a problem, even if it's not a blow up a scene. It's gonna like be passive aggressive. And it's gonna like be a weirdness between y'all. I see what she's saying. Anybody outside of you, like. And that shit, that shit is toxic, and that shit makes you feel tied down. It makes you feel terrible. And like, I'm read. not gonna sit up here and let nobody make me feel like I'm bugging for, like, not feeling okay about that shit. Like, okay, so a couple of things. So a couple of things. She said that she made um, notes. You okay. know, what did I do for her? She said, "Well, I feel like I did a lot for you, and what did you do for me, girl? I did a lot for you. Like, don't play with me. I did a lot for you. Like." A whole lot. Like, first of all, I had met you online, and you came to New York City, and you never left. Like, yeah, you came I, on a one -way I was gonna say that on my last video. I did kind of touch on it a little bit, but on my last was not from New York. Like, I think people got that assumption that because she stayed, that's where she was from, or she had been in New York for a while. But no, like she came to see Chanel, like she said, and never left. Like. That happens with a lot of lesbian couples. I've heard that story so many times. Oh, this person came to visit me and they just never left. We fell so much in love, but it doesn't work out for everybody. More often than not, it doesn't work out because this is your first time seeing someone and they just never leave. Imagine that. Like they were supposed to be here for a set amount of time and then they just they just never go. Like you 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 really don't have any time away from them to reflect on whether or not you want to be with this person because they never left. You never left me. So I gave you somewhere to stay, I gave you somewhere to live. I even lost where I had to live because I was like sacrificing my situation for you. You came to visit me and you never left. And I had a whole living situation that I had going on that it didn't work out. Like I, you know, I was living with my sister and it was like, you just messing my internet and how they just live here. So I was fucking with her so hard that I'm like, well, I'm leaving. So I left an apartment that my mother left for me and my sister that we were supposed to maintain together to keep what we had going on. And that's a big deal. Cause I had like, it had brought a big thing in me and my sister's relationship and all of that. So it's like, you saying, what did I do for you? That's one of the number one things I did for you. You came to me on a one way flight and we built and, and I, I gave you a place to stay and we stayed together and we built and we grew yeah. together. So don't it's stay up like and say, what did I do? They got together. They got a bag together. They had several nice apartments and all types of shit. Was buying cars and all types of shit. And that's what I'm saying. Everything that glitters is not gold because at some point it went wrong. But the videos kept coming. Because I got on camera and said a lot that you did for me and you said not financially. I said a lot of shit that we, that we did and built together that I appreciate. So, like, don't sit up here and say, what did I ever do for you? Anytime something happened with your family, da -da, I was your right-hand man, and I was right by your fucking side. It's real easy for people to say that you ain't never did shit for them once, to make it to Georgia. once you're uh -uh. gone. I was there for you. I was there for you, your family. Uh -uh. Like, don't sit up here and be like, what did I do for you? Like, because you said you sat and thought, damn, I did a lot for her. What did she do for me? Then it was times that we were in a relationship and you're older than me. And it's like, I would try to try to motivate you with different stuff for like credit, different things like that. Like really growing. And you know that it will cause arguments, fights. It's like, you didn't want me. You didn't even want me to help you in certain ways because when I did, it turned into an argument. Like me saying something to try to motivate you was like, you felt like it's me belittling you or something. Like our connect, like sometimes our connection and our vibe, it just wasn't really and you know you know what happened that day when we was out and we had the credit conversation and how that went and like that was me trying to do something for you and try to motivate you and, and shit like that and you just bro you know like you already know the dynamic I, I can see that, that cause yes I am perceived as the more masculine person in most relationships but from like having stud friends and knowing other studs, when their femmes try to have com like financial conversations with them, they take it as like, oh, I'm supposed to be the head of the household. What you, what you talking to me about finances for? Like, it's not supposed to be like that. You should be able to have open dialogue about finances, about growth, about all of those different types of things and not feel like intimidated. You shouldn't feel intimidated because that's what it is. It was gone. I don't know if you even know, but it's so crazy, guys. It was to the point, like, towards the ending of this relationship, my mother and my sister was literally scared for my safety. 
towards the ending of our relationship, I was spending more time outside because I was not happy. I was telling on my love day to day that I wasn't happy with her. I wasn't happy with the relationship and I didn't want to be with her. It's so crazy that one time I had my sister on the phone with my phone in my bag because my sister was so worried about my safety and they knew how I was feeling. She knew how I was feeling and everybody was like, you have to express yourself to her. Like, you have to let her know cold turkey, like what it is. And I was telling her, but like I had to really tell her, like, listen, I don't feel like I'm in love with you anymore. She and was I don't feel like this is working. It. Like, I right. don't feel like this is working out. And she literally, she put on a big scene, guys. Like, it was literally scary. Like, she fell to the floor. She act like she was gonna literally probably kill herself or me. I swear to God. Like, and it was so scary. So like, wild. I don't know. I don't know if people know what that feels like. Like. To so, be, like, uh, going back to my last video when she was saying that she was breaking down and she was crying and Chanel was just standing there not doing nothing, maybe this is why. Like, Chanel was scared. So, she couldn't comfort you because she was scared for her own safety. You know, there's always two sides of a story. Chanel is saying right now that, yeah, you did break down, but she was scared of how you would react. So, maybe that's why you didn't get the comfort and the affection that you needed in that moment because you were scaring her and vice versa you know omala needed affection from chanel she needed um reassurance i guess to know that everything wasn't a waste and chanel did not give that to her so it's interesting to see both sides because i could definitely see how this situation transpired now it's filling in a lot of blanks literally feeling like you're outgrowing the person i don't think that it's either of them are wrong at this point i think it's just two sides of a story like they were both in their head going through separate emotions and not communicate not communicating those emotions to each other because had chanel stopped and said look i want to talk to you about this but the way that you're acting right now is scaring me can you calm down so that we could talk about this then maybe if omala calmed down they would have been able to have a conversation uh, omala would have got the closure and the answers that she needed chanel would have gotten omala to not act like that not scare her like that trying to tell them and they love you so much that they don't want to leave you and I, I could definitely understand that but relationships take two it takes two people and it, it's it's really bad that yes I feel like we're outgrowing each other we want two different things out of life which is okay because I met you when I'm 22 and I'm 27 like I have the right to outgrow to grow and to grow separate if we're not fulfilling each other like you said in your video you're happier without me you feel good you're glowing bro we were depressed we were fucking we were dying together bro like we were not happy and i told you that shit like i told you i, I told you she's, she's saying real passionately right now like they were basically like so toxic to each other where they were dying Okay, so just keep that in mind the next time y'all look at these couples and be like, oh, they couples goals and blah, blah, blah. They were still pumping out videos. They still pumping out videos and shit. And people calling them couple goals and behind the scenes, they feel like they're dying. Many times. Like, and you, you can't said, idolize I, I feel like couples. I didn't. You know, you know the truth, bro. Like, you know, I was not happy no with you. And you I told like you this shit to your face. Every single time I told you that I didn't want to be with you no more, you put on a fucking scene. Like, a crazy ass scene. And it's like, sometimes I literally was scared for my safety, bro. Like, I literally thought that this girl could kill me. I'm not even playing. And she wasn't a piece I wonder why she felt like that. Did Omala ever put her hands on her? Cause like, that's a jump. Like, I don't know. If I get into an argument with my shorty, I'm, my mind is not gonna go to like, oh, she's gonna hit me, she's gonna kill me, unless I've seen that behavior from you before. If I've seen that behavior from you before, then I have a reason to think that way. But if I've never seen that behavior from you before, why would I just think that like I'm unsafe? Y'all get what I mean? I don't know. Talk to me in the comment section. I'm talking about it. I'm bugging, but she know the real tea. Like you know, like you know. And it's like you might say shit and not mean it, but it's like people are really out here getting killed by these significant other shit. So it's like something don't like say that she threatened that her safety. Mean. And I believe that shit. Like, when you told me that shit. Whoa, whoa, whoa. When I she told you shit. what? When like, she told you what? So, that shit, I believe, could kill me. I'm not even playing. And she goes up here and see that shit and say that I'm bugging. But she know the real tea. Like, you know. Like, you know. And it's like, you might say shit and not mean it. But it's like, people are really out here getting killed 
somebody significant out of that shit. So it's like, don't say some shit that you don't mean. And I believe that shit. Like, when you told me that shit, I believe that shit. Like, okay, so maybe so she did throw like, her safety. I, I That's what it sounds like. I told this girl so many times, like, I didn't want to be with her. Like, I'm not happy. And she just kept tantrums. She'd be like, well, we got to work something out. We got to, no, like, I don't want to work nothing out. Like, I know that I don't feel the same way about you anymore. And I don't want to be with you. Like, it sucks. It hurts. But I'm telling you, I'm being real with you. You did not want to accept that. Like, you still try to hang on. You still like, no, but we could work. Okay, I'll just finally, I'll give you the space. I'll do this and I'll do that. I understand that you want to do it now because I'm... You can't believe that, though, because people will say anything when you're ready to walk out the door. People will say anything to try and get you to stay. So, at that point, it's just like, you can't believe nothing that come out of their mouth because you don't know what's true, what's genuine, and what's just desperate for you to stay my breaking point and I'm like I can't do this no more but you already set this tone for me like even if you let me have friends now you let me have a social life bro I feel she guilty to talk about it do I don't feel confident like about it because this is not who you yeah. are you already show me who you are and how you react in these situations so it makes yeah. me uncomfortable to really be myself it sucks that they went so, through that I told her straight up she know that I had this conversation a couple of times on her we had see it now makes way more sense i understood what she was talking about like being in a codependent relationship and dealing with the trauma from that but now it makes even more sense why she feel like she's traumatized and doesn't want to get back into another relationship soon like i want you to think back to mad times like when you were you know going through we have mad emotional nights you know that you know the night rehab. i'm talking about if you're watching and, and all she said rehab Mad times, like when you were, you know, going through rehab, mad emotional nights. You know, oh, the, you know the nights I'm talking about if you're watching. Okay. And, and all those she nights watching. with all signs really that this shit is videos. not working. And I don't want to be with you anymore. And I had stayed in this relationship way longer than I needed to because I was just scared to end it. Like, I didn't even know. Like, I just didn't know what was going to happen. And when I came home and she was gone, I was so shocked. Because I thought that in order for us to leave, it was going to be some crazy shit. Like, I, I just didn't. I just didn't even think she had it in her to just leave up and leave like that. The way that she carried on and asked about me. And people be thinking, like, people loving you unconditionally and shit is cute. It's great to have somebody love you. But when they Not love you that. more than they love themselves or more than anything in this world, it literally gets scary, bro. Like, yeah. nobody, nobody's going to understand how I feel. Like, No, I think a lot of people will understand how you feel because a lot of people have been in that situation more than probably want to admit it but yeah and if you haven't been on Chanel's side you've been on, on my last side where maybe you did make somebody feel like not that they couldn't leave you but that you would um react a certain type of way if they did so I, I definitely feel like more people have been in this situation than they want to admit I do <laughs> Especially the way that toxicity is glorified nowadays. Like, people glorify toxic relationships. You can't grow, and you telling the person over and over, like, this is not working, I don't want to be with you. Sad. But they trying to hold on, they like, no, we gonna do this, we gonna do that, we gotta cancel this, we gonna, gonna do this, bro. It's bigger than that. Like, I just don't feel the same. You get what I'm saying? And then, so I told her all it is, nothing was changing. So yes, I was going out. So it was nights where I would hang out with my sister and shit, man. They, I was going so she's out saying and I was saying because I did not want to come with, home. Like, like I was not happy. It was like I keep telling this person I don't want to be with them and it's not working, and they're not listening to me. Like they're threatening to hurt themselves. They threaten like they been trying to make you feel bad, but it's just not working. Like, and then I had a conversation. I was like, we could plan like. I told her straight to her face, like, I don't want to be with you anymore. I'm not in love with you. And, you know, I feel like when we do break up, like, I, I feel like we should write out this lease and we'll do this. We do. I, we literally had a whole conversation about all of this. You get what I'm saying? And, the problem and then, is with some people, and I'm not saying, at this point, I don't, I don't know. She could be exaggerating or Malaka could be exaggerating. I don't know. I'm just going based off what they're saying. I wasn't there. When, and at that point, when you're in a situation like that with someone that she's describing, you can't give them that time. You can't say, oh, we're going to ride out this lease because in their mind, 
they're like, oh, okay, yeah, I got five months to change her mind. I got five months to, you know, make her love me again. That's not the case. You can't give them that time. With people like that, you gotta dip. You have to leave. Pack your shit and leave. Like, if that's what it takes, or if they're not gonna leave, because giving them that time, giving them that leeway, is just going to allow them to think that something could possibly happen that's not gonna happen, that you already know is not gonna happen, because you don't want them anymore. She's coming on here and talking about I'm in a relationship. I'm not in a relationship. I'm actually single. And, you know, and then she want to talk about receipts and all that. And I'm going to tell you guys how possessive and crazy that this girl is. She has a tracker on my phone oh, even till now. So it's a lot of stuff going on like that y'all don't know about. What you mean till so now? Get a new phone. Get a new phone, get a new plan, get whatever you have to get so that this woman can't track you if she's tracking you. What the fuck? She took my birth certificate, she took all my stuff, she took the YouTube channel, had my social security number, still on it, connected to it, and she left her laptop here, so by mistake, and it's like the only reason why I got my social and my, my, my paperwork back and all that shit back is because she left her stuff here. Y'all really have to understand, this shit unfolds and it has a lot of layers to it, and it's reasons behind everything. And like nobody is gonna make me feel bad about what's going on. Like I don't, I, I don't even like holding on to that type of stuff with people. Like when, when it was me and my ex, yeah, I kept her birth certificate, her social security card in my safe, but I did not have it. Like it wasn't with me. I didn't, I didn't say like, oh, I have your birth certificate and your social security card. Like no, it was just in my safe, so that it stayed safe. It was right next to my shit. And when she left. Her shit went with her. I'm not gonna hold on to that. I'm telling you right now, like, she knew, we both knew that this relationship was coming to her, and I told her straight up. And the person that she's saying that I talk to right now, honestly, I, I never, because she tracks my phone. She she tracks my phone, she invades my privacy, and even when we aren't together, she tracks my phone because she told me that I'm dating somebody that. First of all, nobody in the world would know that I was talking to them unless you tracked my phone because me and this person, we wasn't on certain networks together. We wasn't, and I honestly have receipts that I did not see him until after she left. Like, I have receipts that I did not link him till after she left. And okay, but you were talking to him because you said the only way she would have known is if she was in your phone, but you were talking to him. Is that... Is that it? That's what I'm hearing. I don't know. I don't care because our relationship been over. Okay. I've been telling her how I felt. All right, so and yeah, no she was talking to so somebody else. So when you can, like, move on. Right. Like, if we're not together, you leave. And I keep telling you I don't want to be with you. And I'm telling you, like, this is not working, babe. Like, I love you, but this is not working. Like, we're not working. Like, we're out. We're just... It's not working. You know I didn't want to be with you anymore. You know I wasn't happy. And you know you wasn't happy. And yes, you wanted to marry me. You wanted to, but bro, you was depressed. I was depressed. She wanted to you stick with the plan. Happy. That's what it I is, because you already planned it out. So people want to stick with the plan. They don't want to deviate. That's what it is. At that point, they don't even love you. They love everything that they built up to. It's like, nah, you, you can't go, because we already put five years down on this we already built you know we halfway there they want to continue with the plan it, they don't have nothing to do with you they're just so focused on what they envisioned and that does get a little scary and you yeah. just try to hold on to something because of the time and the potential mm -hmm. but we knew mm -hmm. me and you we knew that this shit was not going right That's telling crazy. somebody like i'm not it's blowing my mind right now because like the same. it's painful people really idolize them you can't them idolize these couples like leaving them high and dry or you really are doing some infidelity shit when it's like yo you acting like you in love with this person you cheat on them and they really think you they rider and you leaving them embarrassed me and her, a lot had already changed we had stopped fucking we wasn't posting each other our relationship was dead I told her that I'm not in love with you. I don't feel the same about you. We aren't happy with each other. Look at us. And I told her that. So after I told that and I realized like she was not button. She didn't care about how I felt. She didn't respect my feelings. She felt like I don't give a fuck if you want to be with me or not. Like, we going to stay together. But relationships don't work like that. It takes two people. It literally takes two people to, to create a relationship. And um once I realized, like, this girl is not letting up or she's not going to let me, she's not going to let me, like, 
and I understand it's a five year relationship, but we worked through this for years. This shit wasn't peachy cream for like two or three years. We That's what I was thinking. I, I was definitely thinking that they probably ran into trouble around that two year mark where everybody runs into trouble because that's just, that's where things start to fall apart. That's where you start to see the cracks. That's where you start, you can't put up with the things that you were putting up with. That's when that happens. That happens at two years. So I, yeah, that's definitely what I was thinking. But they stayed together for the YouTube bag. In working on my relationship and nothing was and because maybe like, they wanted to make growing. it work this but is why we feel so much more alive away from each other we feel better because we were together dying together we didn't feel good we weren't growing and i can tell you that so i did start spending more time out the house i didn't want to be home like that i was hanging out more with my sister my family i was trying to separate myself away from her as much as i could because she we were so codependent and i just wanted to feel like me I wanted to feel like a human. I wanted to feel like I could do shit outside of somebody and feel like a fucking individual, bro. So, yes. That one night I came home and she was gone. She she just, she was missing. And that night I had spent the night at my sister's house. I was literally at my sister's house. I slept over at her house. I have a room there, a room that me and her used to stay in. I slept at her house because it was like, certain nights I just didn't want to come home because every night we was arguing. And we was going back and forth about like the about our relationship declining, and it's like, bro, like only so many times you could say that. I don't want to come thing. home and be in misery every night. Like it was so miserable, and like even coming home and just being worried sometimes. Like sometimes her breakdowns was scary, and I used to tell her like, "You need help," and she know I used to tell her that because it used to be scary. Our relationship was done, and you know it, and the internet knows it. One thing y'all can guarantee: Did y'all see us popping out? Did y'all see us being happy? Did y'all see us posting couple videos? Did y'all see us together interacting? No, for months. Like our breakup came out of nowhere. It seems they would be gone for months at a time and then come back and film videos and then be gone months at a time and then come back and film videos but it was weird because they never said that anything was wrong but really think back like our chemistry and everything was off for a minute this is nothing new our relationship was dead we were holding on to dead weight we were holding on to the fact that she just didn't want to accept that i don't want to be with her anymore so it's like we're just holding on for dear life and I'm just sacrificing myself for my happiness. But to really, Chanel should have packed her no, shit and left too. Everybody got to take accountability. And I told you. On my life, I felt like Chanel wasn't giving her what she needed, the affection, the attention, all of that stuff. She should have packed that shit and left. Chanel felt like she couldn't be an individual. She should have packed that shit and left. At some point, they do have to take accountability for the fact that both of them could have called it quits. They could have left. You know this. And you still want to hang on. You don't want to let me go. Man, this is not what I want. So, you know, that's the real tea. I'm just going to leave it at that. And y'all take what y'all y'all take. Wow. Down below in the comment section, definitely let me know what you think or what you thought about the video, what you think about the situation. Talk to me. I'll talk back. Like, comment, subscribe. Show some love to the original video as well. And I will check y'all out in the next one.